Hello, I'm Paul Weiss, and I wanted to give you a little information on my photovoltaic electric system that I've had for many, many years, and over the years it's been upgraded. And I'll show you the start of the outdoor system where the panels are, and then also show you what I have indoors for inverters and the rest of the system and battery. Um, I'll show you two different systems that are unique. The moon I did very long time ago and is still working. And then the other is one for the main house that I really expanded over the years. So this is my oldest system, uh, solar power system in a wood holder. It's actually over 15 years old and it is just a small system and it's actually uh, a very simple grid tied photovoltaic system with just three panels and these panels really don't produce a lot of electricity but they're about 500 600 watts of energy that's going into the grid just continually feeding it and i'll show you the inverter for this system this is just called a grid tied islanding inverter and it's small it's only can be about a thousand watts but i've had this for a really long time and it just feeds that individual panel into the grid and as you can see my feeds from the panel are here and then it's just simply tied in directly into an ac power connection and that just feeds into the wall here. I do have a watt meter to see what it's producing. It's like 82 watts of power right now. So not a lot of electricity this early in the morning. But that's a simple system. It's UL approved and it's very simple. There's really very little in installation issues other than I had to put in a DC disconnect on the panels. This is my my very large array this is 30 panels and these are put in in 2014 by a local solar provider and this is a ground mount system and uh, these panels are fairly old i originally had 24 panels and then expanded at six to 30 panels and this is what's called the ground mount and you can kind of see underneath here uh, it's constructed of aluminum and those go into the ground. I'm using the area to, to uh, store some firewood, but uh, this is what the structure looks like. Very sturdy, it's been up since 2014. And on the back of each panel is what's called an optimizer, a DC optimizer. And those really have two main functions. One is they prevent the whole grid, the array from uh, going down if it's partially shaded. So you can get shading on just one panel and really only have that panel being affected versus the whole grid array, which is in the old days how it was. And also the nice thing, the new features on these optimizers are that they have the ability to connect to the internet through your inverter and you can see the output of each panel and I'll show that to you on my the app the app that controls it but these um, the newer ones also that I have on the roof the optimizers are also aid and fire safety uh, for rapid shutdown at the panel level, so they're they really uh, have come a long way in their what they do and how powerful they are. And these are made by Solar Edge. Many people ask, uh, what's the advantages and disadvantages of a ground mount array um, versus putting it on your roof or versus having a tracker? Um, a ground mount array is probably one of the least expensive ways of putting up panels. It also doesn't affect your house at all. It's just a separate place. The other really nice thing about it is 
it will shed snow loads. So if you live in a snowy area like I do here in Maine, um, the snow will just shed off of this and go onto the ground um, versus your roof, which it can go on your areas that you don't want uh, when it falls off the roof. And I'll show that to you. But I would say one thing that's difficult here in a very heavy snow belt is the snow builds up so high below this that I have to actually snow blow this area because uh, the snow builds up so high. Um, so some people leave them and they don't care. They'll lose output in their bottom row, but I like to get the maximum out of every panel. So I snow blow sometimes uh, once or twice a season at the bottom of the array so that the snow is, can shed off and not block the panels. Now this is my other roof array that's been expanded twice. The top panels are like 300 watt and these bottom panels are over 400 watt. And this is just a place where I kind of have an extra array. There is some shading, as you can see from my house, on part of this array. But since the panels are so big, it still produces a pretty good amount of electricity. Um, so these two, or these two separate arrays are connected to the two garage inverters, and I'll show those to you now. So these are the two garage inverters, these old solar edge inverters. Again, they convert uh, DC energy to alternating current so that the house can use that current. And they're th 3,800 watt inverters by solar edge. And you can see on these little displays how much energy they're producing. Um, this one's producing about 1,500 watts right now. And this other inverter is producing 1,700 watts. Um, these are wirelessly connected by this extra wireless network connector to my house. And they are directly tied into um, the rest of the system, which I'll show you in one moment, which happens to be in a different part of the house. So down in my basement are the other inverters. So this is my basement electrical utility room. And we have a bunch of different things down here. Um, the first is the third inverter. So this is a new HD wave solar edge inverter. And this one is a more modern type that can handle battery backup and storage and it can also do EV charging. In addition to this system, which is the new HD wave inverters, these connect wirelessly to your phone. Um, I have uh, this backup interface. So this is a SolarEdge backup interface. And basically what this does is will transfer the electric power in a power outage to a backup loads panel. And what is that? Well, I used to just have a single electric panel like this, and all the circuits of the house were on it. What I've done, done since then is pull the important cir circuits that I need electricity for in an emergency to this panel. So connecting through the back of here into this big gutter is what's called a backup loads, critical loads interface panel. So all those circuits that are really important, my well pump, um, some critical circuits like computers, the kitchen um, refrigerator, my fish tank, etc., are on this panel now. So when the power goes out, which it does here in Maine very often, we have the worst power of all 50 states. We are the worst, number 50. Um, this backup interface will switch over within, uh, I think, one to, two, one to three seconds. I can't remember what it is, but it'll switch to here. It will take all those loads, will switch it 
just to this. And so you have backup circuits that you can use. It's a limit, more limited amount. Now, where is that electricity coming from in an outage? Well, if it's during the day, it can come from the inverters. But also in the evening, we have this, which is a solar edge 10 kilowatt battery. This is a you know, lithium ion battery. It's you know pretty pretty good size uh, battery system. You can see kind of how large it is for size here. Uh, it is bolted into the wall here for security, and it's wired uh, directly into this inverter. So this inverter is controlling that backup power supply, and in an emergency, I have 10 kilowatts of energy that can be used. Now, during the day, this can recharge quite quickly because I have a very large array. And um, if it's sunny out, it'll recharge. But if you there are some storms that were like one or two days where you didn't have much sun or any sun. And this system worked pretty well. I had to be careful not to use too many things. But for the important things like my well pump, um, and refrigerator, this is critical, and the fish tank, of course. One of the things that I did um, recently is I I redid the, uh, made a wiring diagram of all of this because it is a little bit confusing, um, especially if I were to ever sell the house for the next owner, what everything is and where it goes. Um, these little funny blue lights, these are surge arresters, and that's also put in a case of a, a light, lightning strike uh, surge protection. Um, it will protect, you know, this electronics because these are very expensive inverters. The backup interface is very expensive. The battery is expensive. Everything's expensive here. So um, I, I put that wiring diagram together, and we have these uh, surge arresters put in to protect the system from. A, a degree of spiking. It can't do everything. It, it's not going to. A direct lightning strike would could burn a house down and fry everything. But um, indirect strikes and you know significant surges can do that. So that's what that's uh, my system. Again, the inverters. I have three inverters. This is a a seven. 0.6 kilowatt size, so that does that 30 panel array, and the other ones are 3.8. Um, and so this this one is you know, 7600 watts. Uh, this is a 10 kilowatt battery, and the backup interface can handle all all three inverters. And if this needs to be expanded in the future, it can. You can chain on two more of this size battery just to this one inverter. Each inverter could handle uh, three batteries if you had the full HD Wave inverters, but I the other ones are older inverters. They're not um, battery inverters, um, but this one is. So I might get one more eventually, but so far this one is, is okay if I'm very careful with the circuits not to overuse too much electricity. And I'll show you the app, um, what that looks like. So this is my uh, connection to my power grid and the road. And you can see here, in addition to the regular standard electric meter, that there's two extra boxes. And they're called a rapid shutdown switch for the solar. And these, this will shut off the power to the inverters. Also separately is uh, an energy storage system disconnect. So this is for the battery that I have. So if a firefighter were to come here and need to be working on the house, they'll know that there is a solar photovoltaic system because of these labels, and they'll know that they can shut them down in an instant and not get any backfeeding electricity into the grid when there's a power outage and they're doing work on the house. So these are really important features. Uh, they're the new fire codes for modern uh, photovoltaic systems. 
and these meet the standards of 2024. So this is the Solar Edge phone app, and depending on what kind of system you have, you have different features to it. But you can see with this setup that I have how much energy is produced today, it's 9 kilowatts, it's in the morning here, um, and how much is currently being produced by the system. This is in kilowatt hours because that's the production. This is in just kilowatts. How much, where it's going, it's going from the solar panels into the inverter. A little bit's being used in the house, uh, about a little less than uh, 1,000 uh, kilowatts, uh, one kilowatt rather, so 0.84 kilowatts. And the battery is fully charged, so it's not sending any electricity to the battery. But right now it's sending 7.84 kilowatts to the grid. It also gives you stats on how much energy you produced over the month, over the year, and over your, the lifetime of the system based upon the electricity rates that you have. So this is like $15,000 worth of electricity. So these systems do pay off. It's been about eight years, seven, eight years, which is the payoff time, which is about correct. Um, you can look also if you have um, production and consumption CTs, uh, current transformers in your system, which you have to pay extra for, you can get a breakdown of how much energy you actually consume in addition to how much you produce. And you can see it breaks down production and consumption for the day, and it will tell you where it's where it's going to so three kilowatt hours went to the grid 3.8 went to the battery recharge and three 2.3 went into the house use and then their percentages of all of that was produced so right now i've come it's you know in the morning before the sun's out my consumption is higher than my production um i took 7.2 Two kilowatt hours from the grid and 2.32 from the sun from the solar so right now I'm using only a little bit of solar energy a quarter but it was you know overnight I used that so it kind of breaks that down another nice thing that it has is this uh, graph that shows you a com combination of the solar production what the consumption is and where that energy is coming from solar and battery so you can check off these boxes and just see the production for the day so like right now I'm above eight kilowatts of production and you can see the time down here 6 a.m noon so it's around uh, nine o'clock in the morning and I'm really starting to produce a lot of electricity in the sun how much did I consume well overnight I produce. I consumed. Uh, looks like about a kilowatt of energy continuously during the night. And what happened with that? In other words, if you, of that electricity that you consumed, how much of it was from the solar and battery? That's that little blue slot right there. So when I was producing electricity, it was using it basically in the house. This is a separate graph for the battery. Um, it, I have a low level discharge of 60%. And during this day, it's going to charge up to 100%. And then if it needs it at, in the evening, it'll take some of the electricity from that. And then this is over multiple years of data. Um, the reason these graphs aren't perfectly dead on is because I've added panels over the years. The garage panels were added uh, years later, and actually this past year it expanded even further. So I've had four major expansions of panels, adding panels over the years. And then the fun thing, it gives you the how much CO2 emissions you've, you've eliminated and how many trees you planted equivalent. So 149,000 plus um, pounds of carbon dioxide and 1,129 trees planted equivalent. So it gives you a nice breakdown. The other thing it has is information on 
the battery, how much backup reserve you might want in an emergency. You can change that amount. And then this is a nice feature. This is the entire three different inverters and their arrays and how much electricity they're producing. And then you can zoom in and see individual panels, how well they're producing. So like it's in the morning, these panels are getting shaded, so they're not producing very much. But this panel is, you can click on an individual panel and get information on uh, that individual panel, how much it's producing, what the voltage is, etc. So you can really get a, get a lot of information on the system by this um, layout like this. And you could look at it over days, uh, a certain day, a weekly or monthly, et cetera, yearly. Um, you can also click on an individual inverter and get a lot of information on that inverter. Um, so this this just has a, a ton of, of information. I don't have a SolarEdge EV charger. I have a, just an old EV charger from General Electric. Um, it's not tied into this, but if you did, you would see an EV charger here and you can program it to charge only certain types times of the day, like when your solar rays producing energy so you get 100% solar in your car. I do that anyways with my current system by just estimating it. But this is this is a really nice um, phone app. I really like it and it's great to have uh, to really see your system and see what you're using. If you do get these inverters from SolarEdge, I would really recommend the um, extra current transformer installation so you can get your consumption a consumption meter and you know how much your electricity you're using not just producing so you really get a more comprehensive view at what your how the system works what times of day it's working and how much electricity you're using um, the other day i had a spike in electricity because i turned the dryer on and i got so angry i i went outside and i dried my clothes on a clothesline so <laughs> you get to do uh things like that which are kind of fun and crazy but fun all right i hope you enjoyed this and i will be doing another video on my solar hot water system i'll show you that and show you my other things that i have a new electric car i've had electric cars for years and i'll talk to you next time bye bye